Good evening, Rogue. Hi, Stephen. Say a few things about the Crick Shadows, your band, and when you started. Um, we started back in 1992 in Tallahassee, Florida, and um, it was. Um, I, I really wanted to make, um, you know, kind of a, um, uh, an outlet for my uh, own artistic visions, um, and um, kind of, uh, uh, in, in a way, carry on some of the. the New wave music that had been a big influence on me. Um, so I started a band with uh, two other guys at the time. Uh, we were all going to Florida State University, which is um, in Tallahassee. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it was um, it was uh, you, you know it was something that I had always uh, you know seen myself doing. I had been in a lot of bands before this, and. Um, it was just sort of the natural, natural thing from that perspective. Um, but we've been around now for 17 years, and um, I, I feel that even though we've changed a lot of members over the years, we have stayed very true to a lot of the ideas and the concepts that uh, drove Crescendo's music even in the beginning. And also, I don't know, um, what's your inspiration for the songs? Um, they came all from you, as your person, and from your, from your deepest. Emotions, can you say a few things about this? Well, for the a absolutely. The, um, the the thing is, is that when when I was um, when I was in school in, uh, at the university, um, I, um, I I had a, a series of dreams. I had five dreams that occurred um, seven times in repetition. Uh, so um, uh, one dream led into another dream, led into another dream, led into another dream. And um, so these five dreams all connected together, and I had them uh, for five days, and then it repeated seven times. Um, the concepts that existed within, the, within this dream became the concepts that drove Crusaders, and uh, they really became the framework for everything that we've done, um, you know, as a band. It was one of the most significant moments in, or events rather, in, in, in my life, this, this, this dreaming. And um, in a way, um, I, I have taken all of these ideas and, and built them into uh, the, the Crescendo's um, universe. Now, I've also borrowed uh, very liberally from mythology, from history, from uh, literature, from any number of things. And um, uh, you know, all of these things kind of come together to create uh, this, this world of crescendos. Uh, I, I have a degree in art, and um, for me, uh, the crescendos is as much a piece of art uh, as it is a piece of entertainment. And uh, then I want to know, um, when you are starting to make this band and this music, mm -hmm. what's, what's your feelings or Mm, it's better when I when you say a few things about the scene in your hometown that you can uh, have some influences or what, what what is going on that you say okay we make this music and I make it so or so. I think that order. I think that it's 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 kind of different for for me and where I came from musically than it is for a lot of the artists that we are uh, that, that we are uh, commonly associated with. Um, for me, the, the music is something that comes uh, very much from inside. Um, it is extremely melody-driven. It is um, the, 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 the melodies you know, carry a specific emotion. I don't really write music because, uh, for example, hey, uh, um, this is what all the kids are listening to, let's write a song like this. Uh, I, I write um, music that I feel conveys the idea that I'm trying to get across, and, um, and, and this is really the way that it's always been. Not to say that there weren't influences already, um, meaning other artists, other musicians, for sure there were, but uh, I don't think that we ever, uh, or, or I have ever gone and said, hey, I want to be like this artist, or I want to be like this artist. I think that the artist I want to be like is myself. Personally, yeah. And, and, and so instead of uh, trying to um, uh, emulate you know, another, another artist or to play a kind of music that people uh, are, are, are interested in, 
Um, instead, I made a music that I felt would speak to me in order to speak to others. Because that's the, that's the language I understand. Um, so, um, to answer that question, um, you know, where did it come from? Why did I decide the kind of music that I did? Um, I didn't. I, I simply made what came naturally. And um, uh, it, it's, it's really more of the, the, the situation that I have ended up where I am because of what I made, not I chose where I wanted to be and started making music like that. If that makes sense. Yeah, okay. And the last thing is I want to know, um, when you're on tour and all over the years making music, what's your, um, or for better understanding, um, your way to came across all the cities and the, the contact to other cities that we can that you can say, okay, we make a concert like in Switzerland or in, the, in Mexico or whatever, that you could say a few um, things about the, the, the way for a young artist or a young band, exactly for you, um, that you can have more output, output, more output to become a, like a bigger fan base. Um, I think that there's no clear answer um, to that question. Um, except that um, if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you do and you are actively, actively trying to um, uh, get your music you know, out there, um, then that's what's necessary. Uh, the thing is, is that, um, make no mistake, um, being in the music industry and doing the kinds of things, uh, at least from my perspective, um, that, that we do, uh, requires an awful lot of work. Um, it, you don't do it uh, for the for the um, you know popularity or the money uh, or or some kind of glory. Um, you do it because you really love um, what you make and you love the impact that it has on people's lives. And if that's not the reason you're doing it, then you will run out of gas. Uh, you will find at some point that um, it's not enough. It isn't what you wanted it to be. Um, you, you know, you're 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 really unhappy. Um, it, it, it's kind of like um, being in a relationship with a, a beautiful woman, but she's you know not very nice. Um, hey, it's great at first because look how beautiful she is. But eventually you have to live with this woman and, uh, you know, it won't be so much fun if you don't actually like her. Um, I think that, that, that being involved with music, you really need to love music. You need, really need to love, um, you know, the art making process and the creative process. And if you don't, if you're in it because you want to be a rock star and you want to be popular and you want everyone to like you and you want to uh, you know, be up on stage and have everyone think you're great, um, that's doing it for the wrong reasons, and it won't last. Yeah, and at last, I want to say you a good next year, next year's coming, yeah. nearest, and I want to uh, know, uh, have you any wishes or plans for 2010, uh, uh, next year's? Yeah, for sure. I, I think that I'm going to try and have an album out sometime um, by, hopefully by mid-2010. At your um, first own label, I think? Yeah, yeah. We we put out the single. We put out Quicksilver on our own label. Um, but uh, yeah, we've yet to put out uh, an album. Although we have plans to um, to reissue some of the um, Crusaders albums from the past. Um, and uh, you know, in, in terms of the label, there are other things that may be a possibility. We have to see uh, how things go and uh, kind of take it from there. Um, as far as the band is concerned, I think that we keep doing what we uh, always have done, and that's our very best, and try to to, to keep uh, expanding our fan base and um, making music that uh, affects, uh, in a positive way, the people who are already our fans. Many things. No problem.